Hey guys, so this is going to be super, super short. I'm low on data and I um, also am low on battery. So I wanted to get right into it. Good morning, everybody. Um, off grid winter versus off grid summer. I've had people ask me, why did you leave the tiny house? Why didn't you stay? Um, and the reason is that we knew that we were coming back to stay with John in Tulsa in the fall. And if we hadn't been doing that, I would have needed to start getting ready for winter in July because in Idaho, it's not the summer that can be a little bit scary, it's the winter. Um, my first off-grid winter, I was 15 and it was negative 45 Fahrenheit and we had cows that froze to the ground, we had a well that went dry and we had our um, <clears throat> our propane heater or forced air heating in our uh, little single wide trailer that my parents had us living in while they were building the house. That developed a crack and we had carbon monoxide in the house. So in winter if you have one little thing go wrong or a whole bunch of big things go wrong it's a big deal. In winter if you have a wood burning stove and a source of water that isn't going to freeze then you're pretty much okay. Um, in summer at least in our area if you can put screens up and have doors and windows open as much as possible, you do pretty good. Up in, oh my goodness, hello, hello. Everybody, hello. <clears throat> so, the big hard thing in winter in Idaho is pretty much the outhouse. <laughs> Everything else, if you have your wood stored, it's not a big deal to walk to your woodshed and get more wood or to split wood. That's not a big deal at all. Um, we had the rocket mass heater, so it was even nicer because the heat stayed in the house for hours and then it heated the house at night. Now, that being said, the latest that I've stayed in Idaho in the winter was the end of November. So beginning of December, that was how, lo how, long, how late we were there. And we'd had some cold weather and it wasn't a big deal, but we hadn't dropped down into our really extreme temperatures yet. And it was keeping the house warm in freezing temperatures but we never, I don't think we ever dropped below freezing as far as like we hit 30. I'm not sure we got, I'm trying to think if we got a whole lot colder than 30 Fahrenheit. Um, and so as far as like a deep winter in Idaho in the off-grid cabin, I haven't done that. The reason is, is my children. If I was there by myself, I wouldn't worry about it, but kids need, um, a lot of what's the word scheduling they need a lot of consistency when you're off grid and so if we'd had some scary nights and we'd had to go stay at my parents it would have messed up the kids scheduling and um, if I was worried about their comfort if I was worrying about them staying safe and well it would be difficult for me to continue to experiment with off-grid stuff so uh, one possibility is that maybe Maybe this year I might fly back home and spend a couple weeks back home uh, just seeing how it does. Like January and February, end of January, beginning of February is our really strong cold time. And so if I was going to do it, that's when I would do it. I'm not sure if anybody's saying anything. Hello, everybody. Hey, Bobby. <coughs> Sorry, guys. The moisture is hard on my lungs. So, um,. The one thing is, we did use a porta potty, a, a conventional porta potty rather than an outhouse at our off grid cabin, which means that if I went back for a couple weeks, I'd have to order one brought in, which is inconvenient. <coughs> if you guys watch Off Grid with Doug and Stacy, they have an indoor uh, sawdust composting toilet situation. I don't have that because there are laws in Idaho that say that you cannot have even an outhouse without it meeting, meeting the same um, guidelines as the concrete, like big huge concrete come in and, and empty it outhouses that they have in like the national parks and stuff. They don't want you to put in your own outhouse. They don't want it to be a simple drainage system. <coughs> they want it to be more commercial. And I don't want to fight with them about that. I'm already out there off grid and um, in, a, in a little building that does not meet code for people living in it and so even though I know it's safe because if that shuttle stand up to snow 
without us in it, why would it not stand up to snow with us in it? It's, it's one of those like libertarian, I'm going to do it because it's my property and I say I'm going to do it type of things. Um, but in the winter, outhouses are not fun because you have a cold bum. And it's especially hard at night to go out to the outhouse, which is why I think if you have an option to do a dual system, to have an outside outhouse and to have an inside nighttime bathroom option, um, I think that is the best option is to kind of do a dual system. Keep most of it outside, but if you do need to go to the bathroom at the, in, at the not, at nighttime, have some kind of system like that that you can get, then go dump and rinse the bucket and just, you know. It is a big deal. Hygiene is a huge deal off-grid. You really need to be careful about your hygiene. Um, it's why I prefer not to have a whole lot of belongings that need to be taken care of because a lot of them just really need to be sterilized frequently. Um, okay, so... So that's why I'm not there in the winter is for one thing we missed John for the other thing I don't want to take an Idaho winter in my little cabin and be forced into doing it long term if it turns out to be super difficult on the children but I'm willing to go back and try it out in deep winter um, if I knew that the kids were going to be okay which it would be difficult because John works full time that would be very difficult and he goes to school so he wouldn't really have time to uh, take care of the kids during the day and um, so I'm not sure how that would work but in the summertime it can get a little bit warm but it's not unpleasant um, I think the reason that in the south you in the old houses you see the big verandas the big porches and a lot of them are screened in is because they were wise to that is you spend time outside not in the sweltering house where you can maybe get a breeze through the um, through the porch and, and we did the same thing we spent a lot of time on the porch and I would like to put bug screen around my porch so that it kind of extends our living space in the summer. Um, laundry is tricky in the winter off grid because if you try to dry it outside, it freezes. And if you try to dry it inside, it adds a lot of moisture into your air that maybe you don't necessarily need. So once again, having a limited amount of laundry is very, very nice. Um, having a limited amount of dishes is very nice because you don't have to haul as much water. I think it's really good for us to haul our water. Now that we're here in an apartment with running water, it's interesting to see just how much water, uh, especially the girls. For some reason, the girls just really like to let that water run, but they were the ones who were hauling the water before, so I think it's kind of the novelty of it to them. <coughs> Pardon me. And a shower off grid is about 90 seconds, where a shower on grid has a tendency to be over 10 minutes. Uh, showering in the off-grid cabin is not a big deal because we had all that plastic around the porch and what we would do is we would open the door to the cabin and let all the heat from the rocket mass heater move out into the porch and we would also heat the water up out on the porch we would use our propane to heat up the two gallons of water and the heat from the propane the heat from heating the water <coughs> pardon me I'm not used to all the humidity in there and um, then the heat from the rocket mass heater moving out and into the porch meant that it was as warm out on the deck as it was in the house. And so you could go out, we'd have a tub that we would spray the water into as we showered and it was very straightforward. Um, we got bit by, by mosquitoes more in the summer when we were showering because we used the outside shower um, instead of the porch shower. So there's that difference. I'm trying to think if there's anything else. In the winter, if you leave your house and you have canned goods that have liquid in them or you have canned goods that um like, like tins instead of glass jars hey palmetto paratrooper who else nancy mo hello hello um so if you have something with water in it and you leave your house for a day or you go in shopping and you're gone for longer than your rocket mass heater bench can keep your house above freezing then when you get back to your house <coughs> your canned goods may have frozen and exploded so that is one thing in the winter you have to watch where you don't want to have a lot if you're gonna be gone for a couple days you can't have water in your cabin you can't have canned goods in your cabin um, because they will explode oh and my battery is almost gone I've got just a little bit left um, so it's the rocket mass heater is amazing because it'll keep your cabin above freezing for probably about 10 maybe 12 hours after you leave so you don't have to worry about that but if you get let it get all the way cold you have to bring all those rocks back up to temperature it can take a long time to bring them up um, 
and so then you are going to use a lot more wood even with the rocket mass heater just bringing everything up to temperature and I would like to experiment with that I would like to go and, and experience a couple of weeks off grid and see how it goes in the middle of winter but again I'm not sure what I would do with my kids um, <clears throat> it costs us a lot of money to get here because um, uh, whether we drive or whether we fly I've got two extra passengers and and it, um, it <laughs> costs a pretty penny to get here um, <clears throat> anyway make sure to watch I have some keto videos coming up we have some horse training videos in which Kaya gets um, a lesson in paying attention and also a lesson in Mm, being in charge of our own space and being and mom not rescuing her so we have some pony videos coming up and then um, let's see I'm walking around the park today with my little hey Gregor with my little drop spindle I do not have my spinning wheel with me so we have some some more videos coming up with that we have yogurt so still a lot of homesteading type skills just without the animals currently again I am working on that but it takes time so hopefully you guys are patient thanks for watching if you want to see our Facebook live videos Catherine from little bits of heaven homestead is doing that right now make sure to go check her out on Facebook she's going to be primarily on there doing the lives for at least for a bit while I try and figure out how much data I have on my phone for live shows so make sure to like share and subscribe and go check out our Instagram our Pinterest and our Facebook and I think that's it. I also have some blogs up on the website right now, working on getting more up. So if you have any questions, make sure and leave them in the description below. Please say nice things. If there's too many mean comments, I have a tendency to stop reading them and stop answering them. So please keep them at least civil. Um, and we'll talk to you later.